여러분. Welcome to episode 10 of Sakura Pop Podcast, where your K-drama musings come to life. This is Jackie, and I am with my co-host... Bonnie, I'm back! Yay, you're back! Yay! That's why I was so excited, and I was like... <laughs> Howdy ho! That's my Mr. Hanky impression okay. from South Park. All right, that was pretty good. <laughs> so we're back. We back in business. I've been kind of lonely without you. Ah, well. Hence, I turned out two podcasts over the course of one long weekend. That was very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, I also injured, like, my right hand over the weekend, too. Oh, no. What did you do? Not by podcasting. Uh, it was just, a, like, a very simple wrist flicking motion. It wasn't even anything very strenuous. I, I think what, it, what triggered it was I pulled my credit card out of my wallet. Like, I just, <laughs> you know, flicked it out. Like Wow. Normal. What an injury. <laughs> I know my, my coworkers made fun of me. They were like, Jackie is so bling that she whips out her credit card so often she gets arthritis from it. Yeah. It's like when I hurt my neck and then it's not even, it's like before I even get to the gym. <laughs> it's just like at home on my way to the gym. So it's not like, you know, it's not that impressive of a story. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's shameful, Bonnie. I know. You can't even say that this was a sports injury. Exactly. Because I was exercising so hard and I was practicing this like new Superman move. Exactly. So, oh well, I hope your wrist is better now. <laughs> yes, it is healing steadily. Yeah. So this week, we are not talking about K-dramas, are we? Not quite. I... Yeah, I actually, I haven't done much K-drama watching this week. I've been distracted by other, by other, by documentaries and like just non-story driven plot lines. I've also found that I've taken a liking to a series called Hiyori. Is it Hiyori's like B&B? Yeah. Is that the title? That is the title. Um, I think the Korean translation is Hyori's Homestay as well. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, I jumped right into it. I didn't even bother looking to Lucky. see what the title was. It doesn't I just matter. saw like Hiyori. Hiyori, okay. I heard about this. I heard about this from Bonnie, actually. <laughs> yeah, I highly recommended it. Yeah, you were piling such praise on it. And I have to be honest that I wasn't like super convinced yeah because it sounded like it sounded almost too relaxing <laughs> of a genre um and i like my action fair enough and i enjoyed the you know all the melodramatics and stuff of k-dramas so i'm like oh well could i really get into this and it turns out that i can although what's strange is so on netflix there's a season one and a season two, mm -hmm. but season one, the Netflix categorized season one is not where he already starts because it jumps right into like episode eight. Oh, I was, I was kind of thrown off. It's like they don't have any of the previous episodes because it starts right smack dab in the middle of um, ji Yoon. Yeah. Uh, hiking along with like a bunch of guests from the homestay. Oh, that's and, weird. Like, yeah, I thought that was strange. Um, it's, it's like some Netflix didn't buy the whole thing. Uh, I'm not sure about that because I've watched a whole two seasons on Netflix, and I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. they did have the whole two seasons. Oh, okay. Sometimes Netflix screws up the order. So it's like it's not in order. It goes the other way. So if you start watching a show, it starts from like the newest episode in season two instead of the oldest episode in season one. 
I don't know. I, I feel like I couldn't have missed it. But anyways, it landed me in the middle of uh, Ji Yoon being a, the part-time worker for Hiyori. Um, and then it quickly, I quickly moved on to the episodes where Ji Yoon left and Yuna from Girls' Generation became the new part-timer. That's season two. So what you're talking about is that's episode one of season two. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> so you watched season two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, here's what I want to ask. Yep. Oh, actually, no, let's explain to our viewers what is Hiyori's homestay about. Can you give us a synopsis? Yeah. So it's basically Hiyori Lee is a very famous um singer superstar kind of like the Beyonce of Korea um and she's kind of older so she was she's been around for a long time and she was kind of in hiding or in retirement for a long time um so this is her little comeback reality tv show where they her and her husband would offer up their home as a and b for random guests to come and vacation at their home um, and then it just talks about how they run their B&B there and meet these new people. And I I actually, you know, do, I, I don't recognize, like, uh, Iyo, uh, Hiyori. And I was wondering, like, I wondered when I first watched this show, um, I was trying to figure out, like, you know what industry is she from and why does she seem so well known like yeah. why, did, why is she doing that this show and then I realized like and she's very pretty yeah you know she's got this like kind of like very earthiness type of prettiness like hippy dippy um and yeah yeah and I figured oh she's she's definitely famous but from what so now I'm looking at um her wiki page and I see that she debuted as a member of the girl group Finkel. Right. And I recognize Finkel for sure. Yeah. I think it's like a four or five member girl group. And oh, they were so big. Um, Finkel came in the same, they were in the same generation as another girl group called SES. And I think they basically started the uh, girl group craze. <laughs> Oh, yeah, started yeah, yeah. it all like that's when it became really popular right and this is like kind of the hot ses mm -hmm. and finkel days and then after that it was like baby fox and it goes on but you know we we tout girls generation as the girl group of like this generation um but before that there were a, a, a few other girl groups who really paved the way for girls' generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm so you know, no wonder, like, no wonder she got a show all to herself. <laughs> yeah, she's so pretty, and she's so well spoken. Yes, very charismatic. Yeah, so fun, like to to talk to. It seems. And then all the guests, like, they they seem like they're really comfortable with um, talking to her and her husband and, you know, exploring the house. Yeah, I think the guests, at the beginning, they would be kind of, like, starstruck. And then afterwards, they would quickly become comfortable because of how chill she is. Yeah, she's so hipster. <laughs> she is. Like, the way that she dresses, the way that she does yoga and... Um, her whole lifestyle, her house. <laughs> yeah, can we talk about her house? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, okay, so this piece of property looks like it is pretty much smack in the middle of somewhere isolated. Even for Jeju Island standards, it seems isolated. Well, it's a huge piece of land, right? Their house probably only takes up, I don't know, like a tenth <laughs> or like an eighth of the piece of land and it's all the way in the back um so they're basically living in nature and they need room for their doggies to run <laughs> and roam free 
Yeah, five dogs. Five dogs and two cats. Plus two cats. Yeah. That is crazy. It's yeah. Like so many pets. It's like running a farm. <gasps> but it shows how much and she loves animals. Yeah. And um, they it it's such it, it struck me as such a healthy way to live. Mm -hmm. You know what she's doing, and um, you know being very not not being bogged down by the rigors of city living and all the stresses associated with it. Like people come and they, they come to Jeju Island and they come to her place to have a. An adventure, but also a relaxing time, and also to be be one with nature in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, you learn to live off the land a little bit. Um, she's got this. She's got an outdoor bathing, um, like an outdoor pool, a mini pool, like an onsen, uh, like a spa. basically, yeah, yeah, like an onsen, yeah. And she's got this thing called a ger. Mm -hmm. Edgar, it's like a Mongolian tent. Ah, okay. Yeah. So that's how it's pronounced. I I thought it stood for something. I'm like, oh, G E R stands for something. So it's actually Ger. Yeah. Yeah. That is so cool. Like I love that part of the house the most. I <laughs> love the Ger. Mm hmm. So I checked. I just checked on Netflix, and you're right. And I'm very disappointed and really sad right now, actually, because. It appears that they removed the first season. Netflix doesn't have the rights to their first season anymore. So that means I won't be able to rewatch it ever again. Well, for now. Um, so yeah, Netflix only has a second season. The first season is IU being the, the helper. And it's mm -hmm. based some, in the summertime. So you see mm -hmm. that it's different because they don't have the onsen. They don't have the girl. Um, they have other types of activities for their guests, whereas this one is oh, the yeah. winter season and they have winter activities for their guests. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did miss a whole lot then. Yeah. It'll be good but for I'm you to still find enjoying it. it a lot. Oh yeah. Yeah. The second one is definitely I, more and, well organized because they kind of figured out some of the problems that they have with the first season <laughs> with how to run a B&B. &B. Mm -hmm. So you see that they're actually mm -hmm. more prepared. It seems like um, when they have a lot of guests, then Hyori and, and her husband sleeps in her husband's studio. Yeah. So that's... And they some just like... Mm -hmm. They just lay out a futon. <laughs> yeah, basically they stay permanently there for the rest of the season because that's just like it's nice for them to have their own space. It's a separate building. They have their own washroom and stuff. In the first season, they were staying inside the home with their guests as well. Um, I think they were just figuring things out too. Oh, actually, I, I, I want to ask a, a few things about first season. Mm -hmm. What is the deal with the science team because they have all these nicknames for all the guests who stay over and at the end of this uh of the first season they were saying goodbye to like the science team and i'm just curious to what's that about um yeah so same you know first and second season they would have guests varying in numbers from like two people or actually even one person to like a group of people right so because and they're all very unique in their own ways like they're either like a couple or they're like surfers or they are um, explorers so I think the explorers were called the science team <laughs> they called them the science team because they were there to like camp and explore and do explorer stuff uh, so I think that's where they got the name from and they, because they're like, um, camping and stuff all the time and, um, they didn't need a lot of space because they just set up a tent in the backyard. They stayed there for a long time actually. So maybe oh. that's why they were a little bit more special because they spent so much time there compared to some people who only spent like a couple days there. So they develop more of a stronger relationship with these people. Ah, uh, no wonder. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, they were all like, oh, it's so quiet. It, this place doesn't seem like what it would, would normally be without the tent in the front yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And without the camping trailer. Because there's a group who rolled up within their own camping van. Actually, they, Hiori and her husband rented that for them because they ran out of space. So oh. that's why the second season, they're like, okay, we should set up a girl <laughs> um, because they realized they don't have enough space. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I know that context. Yeah. Yeah, it seems the way where the guests sleep seems kind of willy nilly. It is how they're organized. <laughs> it's everybody seems to like just like end up on the floor in the living room. Yep. Um, in in the gur in the you know the big second floor guest room. Yep. It it's like a free for all. Well, be it's kind of funny because their house is not meant to be a B and B, right? Like when they when they built the house. It was just for them too. They don't have kids or anyone else. So um, they basically only have that one bedroom upstairs for them. And everything was open concept. They didn't even have, their washrooms don't even have doors, as you probably notice. Uh, I did notice a bathtub just sitting yeah. in the second floor guest room. And their washrooms, like they set up like um, basically blankets and drapes as doors because. It was just meant for the two of them. So they didn't need doors. And in their studio, they didn't have a door to their bathroom too. Everything's open concept. Oh, dude. <laughs> that is taking open concept really far. Yeah, that's why it's awkward for some of the guests. And I think be because you didn't watch the first season, you didn't really appreciate this as much. And it's, it might be a little bit confusing. But in the first season, the first episode, they didn't have any guests. The whole first episode was showing how they set up their home um, and kind of managed being in the spotlight again, how the cameras worked um, ah. and all the a camera angles and stuff like that. So at first I'm like, oh, this is kind of boring because I didn't even know these people. I didn't know who Hiori is. I didn't follow K-pop. Um, and then it was just showing them living their life in this house and I'm like what's going on and then it made sense mm. as the show went on so yeah. it it would be it would have been good for you to go from the beginning of course to make everything make more sense that's okay I'm comfortable with jumping into the middle <laughs> okay where it gets good <laughs> it does get good where, where the excitement starts uh, the it's not like hugely it's not so that's not the point of the show the point no. of the show is not to feel like the throb of excitement as you're watching it. No. It's, I feel just really, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Kind of like at peace. Mm -hmm. It's chill to watch a show. It's interesting to get to know um, Hiyori, her husband, the part-timer, and all the guests. Yeah. It's like having a mini adventure, but... As a viewer, I'm in my own home <laughs> and I'm comfortable watching these adventures unfold. I suppose it's so uh, wholesome. That's the best way to describe it. It's yes. Really wholesome as a show. Yes. And I've, I've watched, embarrassingly, I've watched my fair share of reality TV shows, American, Japanese, Korean, whatever. And this is definitely the most wholesome reality tv yeah. show without all the drama without all the trashiness you know it's really it's really just calm like watching people live their lives and i don't mind and i actually prefer it more than all the crazy drama that we see i've lived in my share of uh airbnbs mm -hmm. and i find this experience that the guests are having is so relatable yeah Aside from seeing like seeing K-pop stars all over the place <laughs> um, and having them like serve juice to me, um, being able to like speak with a host and um, develop a friendship with them and going out for the day, exploring mm -hmm. the rest of what the, the, the world has to offer. Like this isn't watching what's unfolding isn't far from what I normally experience when I'm I, when I'm traveling out of the country and staying at Airbnbs. Yeah, I think it's 
you mentioned an adventure. I think for these people, a lot of these people, it's more of an escape, you know? Like the first group in the second season, I think it's the judo players. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, they have a really rigorous training schedule and super busy and you can tell because they're like trying to rush back and stuff. So this is their way of getting away as a group and really just relaxing. Um, yeah, you're yeah. right. I see that, um, especially since the guests are mostly late 20s or early 30s, it seems. Mm -hmm. There's a varying and, range. Uh, yeah, it's fun watching the guests too because they're relatable people. They're just regular they're people. They're regular people. They're all really likable. Yeah. Um, the Finkel group <laughs> is cute because they're basically, it's a group of girls. They like just got into university and you know they they came out to to have a good time to hang out as a group of best buddies yeah it's funny Hyori uh, like she called them the Finkel group because <laughs> um one girl <laughs> one girl's in accounting another girl's like yeah. mechanical engineering another girl is in health sciences and then another girl's visual arts and Hyori's like well, these are all wildly different. You guys are like Finkel. <laughs> That's cute. That's so cute. And then um, the surgery group. Oh, yeah, yeah, is, yeah. It's charming, too, in their own way. They're uh, charming. So they're, they're, like, well-established. It's, like, one surgeon and then three male nurses. And he already asked, oh, so, like, it's, like, you guys are friends? Like, you grew up together? Or, and they said, oh, no, we're just, we're just colleagues. And it's, they didn't even call themselves friends. They're colleagues who are one surgical team. Yeah. So they always work in the operating room together, like really closely together. So they just spend a lot of time together at work. It's like a work and family. It's, it's Yeah, it's such a cool dynamic. You're totally into that though. <laughs> Medical Work teams, families? no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Medical <laughs> teams and them working together. So of course you would like that group. <laughs> I do. For me, it's like they work and together already. Why are they going on a trip together? <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And I found it especially funny um, when they're making sangria, and literally it's like the surgeons giving out the orders, like, "Oh, we need this scalpel, son, this please." Son, this son. And then, and then his male nurses just kind of like go about work doing the tasks. Yeah, it's so well coordinated. It's like it's, yeah, it's hilarious. Like, like as if they were in the OR. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It's so such a funny dynamic. Yeah, it's it's really nice. So, how many episodes are you have you watched so far? Oh, I've gotten to Park Bogu. Oh, I was gonna say, did you see the new helper? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That was actually my first, my introduction to him. I haven't seen him in any shows before that. So oh. I'm like, who is this guy? Why is he so who famous? Is this you know, adorably good looking fellow. Yeah. And then I didn't really, I was like, okay, he's kind of cute, blah, blah, blah. But it wasn't until I like watched him at the other shows that I decided to rewatch this again. And I was like, oh no, he is really cute. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's. It's nice to know these people before you watch the show. Because for me, yeah. I'm just like, who are these random people? <laughs> when I first... Oh, for me? Yeah. I'm like, it's Ayu. Oh, it's Yuna. Yeah. Oh, Gum. Yeah, so I never got the starstruckness with anyone. <laughs> mm, that's the appeal factor of the show. Mm -hmm. it's, for sure. I mean, uh, obviously, Yori is a big name, but it's all these other names yeah, her her part timers who are coming in to help. I think she appeals to the older generation, and then these are the newer, you know, idols. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to more Park Bogu. Oh yeah, I, it's Yuna Yuna is still at the house. Yep. Yeah, she it, stays. It, it's it's so it's cute to see the guest reactions too. I know. Because obviously they're starstruck. Okay, so the guys are starstruck by Yuna. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the girls are like completely falling over themselves <laughs> over Park Mogum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, especially when they got stuck. 
because it's snowing and stuff and they couldn't get out so no taxis would come near the near the property yeah and they needed to i think get to the air no uh, get to the lake um and park go goom offered to drive them oh yeah at first it was gonna be uh president lee but um park go goom is like no i i want to help out this is what i'm here for to help you guys run this place yeah and and the girls are just so giddy smitten <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're comf- like, this is the best thing that ever happened to them. Thank goodness the taxi can't come in. I know, that's probably the biggest, like, the drama, if you have any drama yeah, in the whole yeah. series, is the snow, <laughs> the yeah, bad weather. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, and the guys are basically, oh, good for you, girls. Oh, Chuketa, <laughs> they must feel so lucky. <laughs> yeah, so that's cute. Uh, yeah. It's hilarious. It's just a um, really nice and, show. Yeah, it is. So wholesome. And even Yuna is starstruck, even though she's, you know, she's in the same entertainment sphere. Mm-hmm. So they basically, they they do the short interview with Park Bo Goom. Yeah. Um, asking him, you know, what kind of, what appeals you to this house? Why did you want to, like, come and work here and stuff? Uh, was it, what is it that you can do? And he's like, oh, I can't cook. So I'm good at cleaning, but I can't cook. So I'm sorry I won't be able to help with that. And both Yuna and Hyori answered, they both answered like, oh, just your presence here is enough. (laughs) Yeah. I laughed so hard. (laughs) It's really cute. Yeah, so much, so much fun. It's, uh, yeah, it's surprisingly very amusing. Yeah, given it's, you know, it could be considered boring for some people. But at the same time, I think it's more therapeutic than anything. Like, if you need to escape, this is the show to watch. If you need to escape from the craziness in life and the busyness and the drama, like, this will make you calm, peaceful, enjoy life a little bit more, enjoy nature a little bit more. Um, I actually watched this right before the pandemic started last year and or rewatched it right before the pandemic last year and it enabled me to think about like oh you know how Hiori always does yoga at like 4 a.m every day and I was like if she can do that I can probably incorporate more yoga into my life and it's gotten me into yoga again and I still do it to this day so you know there are definitely positive things that you can get out of a show <laughs> So this show is inspiring Mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely puts a smile on my face when I watch it. Aside from Park Bo Goom. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody else, everybody else in the show and the things that they talk about, it puts a smile on my face. Yeah, it is really. Oh, now I want to watch it again. If we, I should make it Again, a tradition to once rewatch wasn't it. Enough. <laughs> no, and you know what? I don't rewatch shows. I rarely rewatch shows, but there's something about this one that I was, you know, when you said that you're watching it now, I'm like, oh, maybe I should rewatch it. That's why I was so disappointed that the first season's gone. Because that's like half half of my binge my binging is gone. Yeah, I don't get all the summer stuff. I missed all of it. Yeah, and it's IU is up funny. <laughs> Is she? She is funny <laughs> in the sense that she is like the opposite of Yuna because Yuna is so capable. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so you, you will see. You might see little references that he already makes in terms of how great Yuna is and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, she looks like, you know, she, like exactly like you said, very capable, independent. Yeah, she came in prepared. She'll just get things done on her own. Yeah. Whereas if you watch the first season, I use like zoning out half the time. She does look that way. <laughs> but in a very cute and adorable way. Like she's not lazy. I don't I think she's just younger and she didn't know she's not as um she's not as people she's not I don't know. Like I don't wanna she's not say people oriented. Maybe not not as people oriented. She seems to be more introverted, you know. 
Yeah, so I, uh, I heard, okay, so Ayu has a TV personality mm-hmm. or like an interview personality. Yeah. So when she's doing um, those, when the spotlight is on her, she's, com- she's very charismatic, very funny. Oh, yeah. Um, but, and, 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 and energetic. And she can clearly like articulate her passion about her music. Yeah, I watch oh. a lot of IU, <laughs> so that's yeah. how I that's how I know. So this kind of like zoning out deadpanish look that she has um, working with Yori, I think that is her non spotlight personality. That's her real self. When she can just <laughs> like yeah, when she can just like sit back and not really worry too much, mm-hmm. and just do you know take care of the basics. And you're good to go. Like, no need to worry about too much makeup, like, or, like, putting on a costume or wearing makeup yeah, or, yeah. Um, or answer questions in a very smart way. It's, there's none of that. Yeah. And right? because I didn't, like, because, like I said, I didn't know her from before, I've only seen her on the show. She seems like such, like, a down-to-earth girl. She always wore, like, baggy clothes you know, minimal makeup, I think, who knows. And then um, in terms of how she behaved, she wasn't very charismatic. She wasn't a very like extroverted, talkative person. Um, So I I was kind of like, oh, how will she be as like a superstar? You know, I couldn't really imagine that. Uh, So it's interesting to hear that she has a different side when she is performing and doing interviews. Um, yeah, it must yeah. be really tiring she's for actually her. Very, she's actually very aware of it. Yeah. She says um, in one interview, she says, because she did an interview with her younger brother once. <laughs> oh. And it was a very cute interview. Is he in the entertainment uh, business? Of, no, he's not. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's still a student. Um, but she invited him to kind of talk about talk about the real IU. And apparently, it's like when she goes home, she sheds all of that workload. Mm -hmm. And she feels like she doesn't have to try as hard to to be very charismatic or energetic. She uses all that energy up for work. Yeah. And then when she goes home for vacation, it's just like, blah. (laughs) Okay, time to time to leave all of that work stuff back in Seoul. Mm-hmm. I'm with my family. I can just be myself. I don't have to worry about stuff. It's all taken care of. I'm just gonna like totally mellow out mm-hmm. <laughs> and not talk. Yeah, because she doesn't talk much apparently once she um, once she goes home. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah. Um, and that's why it's interesting to see her dynamic with Hiori because Hiori's like a very like she's like a chatterbox, you know. Her husband's always like, "Why you <laughs> don't talk too why much? So yeah, much? why are you talking too much? Stop calling me Oppa, you know. Like, stop it." Um, so she, I think Hiori likes that because she's like, "This girl's funny. <laughs> she's so different." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, she's mm-hmm. really cool. So first season, highly recommended as well. I don't think I have a favorite. I think I like both of them equally. I actually prefer Yuna mm-hmm. because it seems like Yuna has more to offer. Oh, yeah. Um, as a helper, it, for, definitely. As Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a bona fide good helper. Yep. Um. It, it seems like, you know, the part-timers are not there to provide entertainment value. That's not their role. Like, they're they're pretty very much in the background in ways. Um, I would have to disagree. Like you, oh, yeah? <laughs> I think the reason see... they put the part-timers there is because it's to attract a younger generation to sign up for it. Yes, um, of course. And it's the appeal of the show yeah. to have star power. Right. But... I see more dialogue between Hyori and the President guests. Lee and the guests compared right. to dialogue from the part-timers. Right. Like the part-timers, they, 
despite their star power, they blend in just pretty pretty well. You know, they don't offer a whole lot of commentary mm-hmm. unless Hyori is directly speaking with them. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a really interesting approach for the show. I think it's usually when you when you land um, K-pop stars in a reality show like this, you uh, they they're uh, you you're promoting them and they're promoting themselves and they have to stand out from the rest of the crowd. But you don't see that here. I think that's part of the appeal too, right? It's so then, you know, it's not all about self-promotion. Um, and they're just there. I think they want to make it believable that they're there as just helpers. Um, and the other thing is, I think in Korean culture, there's still the, you know, the you have the Don't respect. Think. Yeah, you have to respect your elders kind of thing. So because she's the younger one, um, she shouldn't hog the conversations or take too much of the spotlight. Mm, good point. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, I do like that approach. Mm-hmm. Like it's not about them. This is this is called uh, Hyori's homestay for a reason. It's more. It's you know. It's about uh, the house. It's about her and her husband. Um, it's about managing the experiences of the guests um yeah and uh this must be an escape for the part-timers as well oh yeah I... you know they they're not yeah sure they're on tv still cameras are on 24 7 but it's they are not producing music they're not taking dance lessons or singing lessons every single day Mm -hmm. it's you know do do some cleaning cooking chatting look after the house look after guests yeah it's a legit part-time job (laughs) oh yeah for sure you can tell they're tired by the end of the night yeah yeah yeah. um and it must be an escape for them too you know they're surrounded by this natural beauty surrounded with good people good food um yeah must be must be for them in a way a getaway Hmm. yeah yeah there's a saying that like if if you make your body tired with manual labor work Mm -hmm. then a lot of the other kind of mentally exhausting things just fall out and become less important in your life yeah like i just read that in an article like an old um you know, way back when in the 50s or something, there's a philosopher who talked about this. And he's saying, oh, you know, like after the Industrial Revolution, um, after uh, everything became so convenient for mankind and technology has just accelerated our ability to do everything, really, it makes it less critical for a person to do hands-on manual work. And more and more people are just like sitting behind their desks. Yeah. Or doing very monotonous work. Yep. Look at all of us yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. And that's bad. Like even back then, like 50 years ago. Yeah. Uh, the philosopher saying, this is bad for your mental health. Humans are not made for, for this kind of lifestyle. Because it's, it's detra- detractive from thousands of years of evolution. Like, it's just only become recent in the last 100 years that we have ha- we've changed our lifestyle so dramatically. Mm-hmm. So, like, built into your genes, you're built to hunt, gather, mm-hmm. like, go outside, you know, dig around in the field. Work with your hands. Yeah, yeah, work with your body, yeah. like, from day to night. Yeah. And you get to so tired, you can't think about anything else. Yeah. But now it's not true. Yeah. So, it's only recently, yeah. not recently, but, you know, before, it's not like they, there's no such thing as gyms or needing to work out, you know, it's just your whole day is working out and tiring, you know, using your muscles and um, tying your body so then you can relax at the end of the day and start a new day fresh. Um, yeah. It's very not That's natural right. what we're doing right now, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. It's all hard work. All of it's hard work, mm-hmm. but um, somehow what, uh, how people live now it detracts more so from our like well-being. Yeah. Because we're not spending enough time, I think, moving our bodies mm-hmm. and uh, and like spending time getting to know nature i suppose yeah that's why i don't know if you heard like okinawa has some of the most healthy people there who live the longest because you know some of these older people who are like over a hundred are still walking miles every day to fetch water from the well and things like that um and that's how they were raised and that's how they continue to live and that's what makes them healthy and have a long life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I get the chance, I want to hit Yori's homestay. Yeah, but unfortunately, <laughs> <So bad. laughs> we can't do that anymore because she doesn't live there anymore. No. Yeah, so... Where is she? So the sad thing is, you know, after I watched the first two seasons, I was like, okay, when's season three coming out? So I looked it up and I did some research. And season three will never be a thing because people, fans or whatnot, decides to like, her her address got leaked and people started ringing her doorbell randomly to try to like see her and stuff. And it got so distracting that they had to move. And there's no there's no more Yori's homestay as a result. That is so that is so sad. It's super sad. Especially since it wasn't long um since they first set out to do this uh, Airbnb type business. Like first season, I don't know, could they have been a few weeks in only? Cause they talk about um, I'm I'm since I'm on second season, um, I only hear uh, some snippets of what it was like early on when they first opened up the doors, and it sounds as though they hadn't been doing it for very long. Well, it's not it's not a business for them. It's just it's a show, right? So, um, it was it was it says here it's aired from 2017 to 2018 so that's when they did the filming and the airing I guess uh so it wasn't very long and I don't like I don't think it's meant to be a business and they weren't gonna do it long term (laughs) (laughs) you know it's just it's just a gimmick it's like a show but it would have been nice to have a few more seasons just from from an entertainment point of view from like a viewer point of view it would have been nice of course but I think it's more sad because this is their home. This is their actual home. And it looks like it's a custom built home and everything. And the fact that they had to give this up because people were being annoying is very unfortunate. Yeah, agreed. Right. So they were not respected. Their privacy was not respected. And they moved all the way there for that reason. Mm hmm. Mm hmm trappings of being a superstar Mm -hmm. anywho for what it has uh to offer i will keep watching it check out how bogum does in the next three days (laughs) it's perfect timing too you know when i first started it yeah um it had just started snowing oh that's so nice and of course, like all second season is about snow yeah. and the winter conditions. It's a perfect time it's to watch perfect. it. <laughs> it's just perfect. Yeah. And then you can't feel like you're there. Not, not really, but <laughs> close enough. <laughs> Almost. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right. Well, I think we can wrap things up. All right. That was fun. It's great to have you again, Bonnie. Fun times. Yes. Let's see what we will talk about next time. We'll have to see. And uh, thank you, viewers, for tuning in. Please like, favorite, and subscribe. There will be definitely more K-dramas, film reviews, and all sorts of things coming up. Thank you very much. 
다음에 또 봬요. 안녕. 안녕.